Happy Monday to you, everyone. I hope you're doing well out there. I hope you had a really good uh, July 4th weekend. Have you ever looked down at your dog, and some of you probably did this weekend, especially with fireworks going off, and seen that your dog was shaking or trembling? Maybe you're at a vet hospital. Maybe you're about to drop your dog off for boarding. Maybe you're about to start doing some training with your dog. But nevertheless, you look down at your dog, and all of a sudden, it's just shaking, trembling. When that happens, and if it has happened to you, what is the story that you told yourself right at that moment? My dog is shaking. It's trembling. It must be afraid. It must be fearful. It must not like that person. It must not like being here. So many things we come up with. But part of this today's video is to explain to you that there are many reasons why a dog will tremble, shake, and even whine like Marnia here. Uh, there's many reasons why outside of fear, outside of anxiety. After all, trembling and shaking at the end of the day is just a byproduct of the stress response. Yeah, that's right. It's a surge of adrenaline through the body. And when that adrenaline is being pushed wherever it needs to go, maybe it needs to stoke these legs right here because I need to run from something. Maybe it needs to stoke these fists here because I'm about ready to fight something. Maybe it's because I'm super excited and I'm getting ready to chase the ball. When, when I was first teaching Captain how to do behaviors, uh, basic obedience behaviors, and I was using the ball as a motivator for it, he would just shake. i tell him, sit, he had to hold that sit, and he'd just tremble and shake and whine. And if you took the ball out of the context and just put it up, and we're standing inside of a vet lobby or at a boarding facility or you name it, most of us would think, oh my gosh, he's afraid. What's he afraid of? So again, trembling and shaking is not always associated with fear. It is part of the stress response, which again, at the end of the day, it was put there for fight or flight. Notice I said both of those, fight or flight. The wolf that wants to hunt prey so it can eat has to mobilize its stress response. It has to. If you want to do push-ups, you want to go for a run, you want to exercise, you want to get up in front of a camera and from an audience just like I'm doing right here, you've got to mobilize your stress response. Yeah, I'm not shaking. No, maybe the first couple of videos I was. <laughs> but not anymore, kind of getting used to you guys out there. So that being said, how many of you ever stepped in front of a class and you were shaking up there? How many of you are shook because you are so angry at someone, you're like, oh, I'm just, I'm mad, I'm mad. Or you're excited, you go, no, oh, I can't wait, I can't wait, and you're just sitting there shaking. Or you're going, oh, you're watching a scary movie, you're going, oh, and you're just shaking like that. Think about that. I need you to really think about that. I need you to understand that a dog can tremble and shake simply because its body is surging with adrenaline for many reasons. Many. They're not always fear. They're not always anxiety. Because if you keep telling yourself that, then first of all, you're really doing the dog an, an injustice. You're thinking, I'm never taking my dog back there again. Oh no, oh no. She was shaking and trembling. I mean, like a little Marty here. I'm telling you what, she shakes and trembles and we're doing some deactivation work with her and some training with her. And if we were to just stop what we were doing all the time because she shakes or she trembles, we wouldn't get anywhere. And then if she doesn't have good behaviors, if she's not manageable, what happens next? And if you take your dog somewhere and you go, oh, I'm not going back to that vet hospital again. Because my dog was shaking and trembling the whole time she was there. Nah, really? You might, you might sell your dog short. That might be a really good veterinarian there. And now you go to some place of lesser value, lesser quality of care. Same thing. You take your dog to a daycare. Oh, my dog's never shook and trembled before until I dropped my dog off at daycare. Ah, so now you keep bouncing around from daycare to daycare until you finally run out of them because the dog shakes and trembles at every single one of them. Same thing, you go in for training. Well, when my dog first met the trainer, when it met big old Brian, oh my, my dog was shaking. So I'm not so sure about dear old Brian. And I'm not so sure about you. Yeah, the dog shakes and trembles for lots of reasons, guys. All those reasons. I mean, I can just add them up here. There's fear. Yes, there is fear. I will shake. I will try to avoid something. Uh, because, again, my stress response is mobilized. It's a physiological response. 
and there's been information that has flooded into my senses, allowing me to process it real quickly here in a millisecond as an animal, and now I'm responding to that input. So yes, it can be fear. Yes, it can be a non-specific sign of anxiety, but it can also be excitement. It can also be intra-group control, meaning, okay, I've got great resource holding potential here. I got big weapons. I've got incredible fighting experience. I have an incredible fighting ability. And right now I'm shaking because I'm about to pounce on you. I am about to take that thing from you or I'm about to drive you away from it. In a sad story, my book, The Hammer, Why Dogs Attack Us and How to Prevent It, I write a story about William Monroe in which his pit bull was trembling right before it attacked him. Yeah, it's ready. So in, your dog may be getting ready to do the hawk strategy. It could be doing the dove strategy. I just want to get the heck out of here, but I can't get out of here. I'm getting ready to display, nah, show my teeth. It could be predatory, like I said, the wolf. The wolf is getting ready. I'm ready, like your dog. I just did a little video yesterday about high prey driving dogs. Captain was shaking. I mean, when I first took him down to the river yesterday before I shot that video with you guys, he was just shaking, man. He, was, he wanted that ball so badly. And we go for walks in the morning. He loves to grab the leash right off the bat and try and pull me across the street. He's so excited to go for that walk. And I just kind of play into him, play, play a little tug of war with him, whatever. <laughs> I think it's pretty cute. So I've had enough of him down. I tell him out and we're done with it. But he's just shaking. I need you guys to think of this and kind of put this in your mind. When you observe something from your dog, when you see your dog trembling, when you see your dog shaking, what story do you tell yourself at that moment? Because the story you tell yourself will now have two more actions. It'll create an emotion in you, which will then create an action. And I can't stand it. I really can't when people avoid valuable exposure for the animal because it was simply shaking or trembling. Maybe it wanted to play. And it's going, oh, would you hurry up and check me in so I can go play? Yeah, there's a lot of reasons for shaking. You need to take in the, the context in which it's occurring at any given moment. Always the context. And you need to understand that, yeah, it could happen. Why? If I'm in a new place, I'm in a novel environment, what am I trying to do here? I'm seeking out the rules of prediction and control. What's going on around here? Who are you people on the other side of that darn counter? When do these lights get turned off around here? Do we get to eat while I'm here? Do I get to play with those dogs I hear over there? What's going on here? Yeah, they can shimble, shake and tremble. You bet they can. Until they figure all that thing out there. They got, they got to figure it out. But if you just go whisking them away, well, so be it. Nothing learned there. No way. My good old protective owner, again, remembered the video and we're just like drinking from a fire hose. Sucked me right out of that situation. I never had the opportunity to learn from it. And then the other reason why I need you to understand that dogs can shake and tremble for reasons outside of fear is so that you give them valuable social support. Yeah, so if you're looking down at that going, oh my gosh, my dog is shaking and trembling. Then what are you doing? You're shaking and trembling. Yeah, look down at your hands sometime. Sweaty palms. Oh, my stress response is definitely mobilized. I, I, I'm going to miss my dog. It's going to have to stay here for two weeks and I'm just going to miss it. I don't know if everything's, everything's going to be okay. And so now, of course, this shaking and trembling is going where? Down the leash into that. So the thing that was shaking and trembling at first because I was super excited, now all of a sudden looking up at you going, so what are you worried about? What the heck's going on here? What's about to happen here? Yeah, you just fed your fear right down into your dog. They're very temporal animals. They don't have language. So they feel you. And now you just made the dog even more fearful. Wow, you changed the entire context of what was happening at that moment because of your irrational emotions at that time. So guys, sit there, think it through, work it out. Stand there and go, I know this place is safe, and we're going to talk about that tomorrow. We're going to talk about a very serious topic called trust. Because without it, and trust is in short commodity right now, but without trust, you fear. And what you fear, you pass to your animal. And you make the animal fearful, and it doesn't even know why it's fearful. It doesn't have your cognition, your ability to process all this information. It just processes what's coming at it right then, right there, lives here, lives now. 
It can't mobilize its stress response from a mere thought like you can. So it's simply reacting. They're reactive animals. So walk in there, do your homework first, and then trust it. Make a decision, flood it with absolute certainty, absolute certainty, and then take massive action on it. That's how you do it. So you walk in there, you go, hey, here's my dog. Hey, good luck to you. I think you're going to do great. See you later. Walk out that door. If any of you have children and you've ever dropped your children off at a daycare, you know what that's like. Yeah, it hurts. That kid's crying. Oh, please, please don't leave me here. Yeah, it hurts. It does. But you know what is best for your child. You know that this is a pain that must be endured. You must do this. And so that's what we do. In the military, we used to call it embrace the suck. Yeah, as simple as that, embrace the suck. Embrace it. Get it done. So again, make a, make a decision. Flood it with certainty. And then take massive action on it. Provide that social support to your dog. And then counter conditioning. Yeah, you see your dog shaking? Tell you what. <laughs> Why don't you sit? Why don't you lay down right now? Let's get your mind focused on that instead of what's going on around here. And when you lay down, man, I'm going to pet you. I'm going to give you that treat. You may not take it at the moment. Maybe too excited. You could be fearful. But let me show you how we get things done around here. Remember me? The guy that can make you lay down? Do you, do you see me worried? I'm not the least bit worried. Yeah. And we're going to come here over and over and over again until you get used to it. Through exposure, you get used to it. You could even habituate to the very condition that caused you fear in the very beginning. But none of that's going to happen if you think that every time you look down and you see your dog shaking or trembling, it's because of fear. It's not, not when you do it. I've already explained that. So guys, social support. Expose your dog out there to the world, to those, some of those things that it may be fearful. But please stand back for a second and go, okay, my dog is shaking and trembling. What story am I telling myself? My dog must be afraid. But... Like Brian said, could there be a possible different explanation? Could there be another reason why my dog could be doing this? Hunt that thing down. See if you can find it. Did the action that I took, taking my dog out of the situation, was that the best action I could have taken at that moment? Was that the correct action? Are there consequences for that action? Think it through, guys. And if you can't do that while you're standing there holding on to your dog and it's shaking or trembling, go put your dog somewhere else and give it a thought. Okay? So I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about that today because I run into that all the time. I, I, whether it's uh, an input from you guys that send, you send it to me and you tell me about it, whether I observe it myself. Yeah. I mean, I, I've played with dogs. And when I finished playing with them with a ball, their little back legs are just going... Nrr just shaking, going like that. And I've had people walk up to me right then and go, why is the dog afraid? How do you know the dog's afraid? You don't have a clue what the heck just happened around here. That's my problem. Because that emotion creates actions that are not good for you and they're not good for your dog. So again, go back, rewind this video if you need to, but come on out there. I need confident dog owners. I need dog owners providing social support. I need dog owners who are brave enough to put their dog in a position to learn through its own self-discovery. It needs to have exposure so it can get predictive information so then it can control the outcomes, control what happens to it, so that it can even become habituated to those things that cause it fear. And none of that is going to happen unless you make it happen. Okay? So practice it. If anything, fake it, baby. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to fake it with a dog, but man, fake it for yourself. Do your homework. And we'll talk more about that over the next couple of days as I deal with situations that typically cause owners a lot of angst, causes them to shake and tremble. So they'll get over it. Because I'm telling you what, the attitude that goes down that leash is the one that comes back. And I'm, we've got to get this part under control. And I know you guys can. I got absolute total confidence in you being able to do this. 
Okay, so stay tuned for tomorrow as we move down this road here, introducing our dogs to some things, or ourselves anyway, to situations that we think might be really bad, it causes us a lot of emotional angst, causes us to be fearful. What can we do about it? How can we mitigate that to a degree so that everyone's stress response is lowered? Because again, I always told you, stress won't kill you. It just sets you up to be killed by every darn thing else. Okay, you with me on this? You guys with me? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Get busy. Get confident out there. Let's go. Now you know that your dog can tremble and shake for reasons outside of fear. Let's get it done.